Hello, my people. It's my hope that you are, you are having a fabulous Sunday. Welcome back to my YouTube channel whereby we educate. And uh, most importantly, we pass knowledge to you guys, which may help you, your sister, your brother, or any of your family relatives uh, in dealing with some certain conditions or diseases in life. Before I start the topic of the day, let me start by thanking you guys for the continued support you have shown, you have showed me. Uh, thank you for the almost 7,000 subscribers. Let's continue sharing, liking, subscribing, and encourage our friends to benefit from our content. Today, we are going to discuss about a, a very common condition uh, which so many parents have been asking me uh, or, or, or else they have been requesting me to discuss about this condition because it's a very co common condition to children and uh, this is a, a condition I, I'm sure of 90% of us have come across it or have suffered it and uh, let's get to know more about this condition. So today, the topic of the day is uh, what we call tonsillitis. What is tonsillitis? All tonsil inflammation. Tonsillitis, all tonsil inflammation, is an inflammation of one or both of the two oval-shaped parts of tissue at the back of the throat. Tonsillitis is an inflammation of one or both of the two oval shaped parts of tissue at the back of the throat. Not this, and this is very important, my people. Uh, you, tonsillitis is usually a viral or bacterial infection. This means it can both be caused by a virus and it can also be caused by a bacteria. This bacteria or virus can spread or can be passed from point A to point B through respiratory droplets, for example, coughs and sneezes. This means when you have this kind of a disease or you have this virus or this uh, bacteria, through coughing, when you are close to your, your, your friend, you can easily spread it through this coughing or sneezing since it's hairborne. I hope you get that point. This bacteria or virus can also spread from point A to B or from one person to another through kissing and sharing drinks. Let's say for example a kid is taking a drink then he or she shares it with a friend that easily passes the virus or the bacteria from her mouth through the saliva to the other person or to the other friend. So let's discuss um, about the signs and symptoms or how can you tell that a child or an adult because sometimes it can also affect an adult. How can you tell that one is having tonsillar inflammation or what we call tonsillitis. One, we have what we call sore throat. Number two, we have difficulties in swallowing. Since these oval shaped parts are found at the back of the neck, when they are inflamed or swollen, they make or narrow the food passage to the stomach. And this makes it difficult for one to swallow. Number three, we have what we call fever. This is hotness or coldness of the body. So in most cases, children or even adults will have high grade fever, which means high body temperature. We have tenderness of lymph nodes. When you, 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 you try to palpate the, the, the lymph nodes or the tonsils from the outside, you, they will feel tender because of the inflammation. Next, we have white or yellow coating patches on, on, on tonsils. This is when you use a torch 
and you tell the patient or the, the child to open up their mouth, you will see the tonsil with a yellow or white coating. That means it's very, very infected. Next, we have enlarged tender lymph nodes or glands in the neck. This is the same as what I've just explained. If you, you try to touch the, ne the, the neck from outside, you will feel the tenderness because of the swelling. Next, we have scratchy, muffled, or throaty vase. This, this means when this infection affects the tonsils, which is close to the voice box, it may, might bring some hoarseness of the voice because of the inflammation. Next, we have stomachache or problems with the GIT, which is gastrointestinal problems. Uh, next, we have uh, another sign which might be seen is what we call neck pain. That is obvious because of the inflammation. Since the inflammation uh, uh, occurs at the neck, obvious the pain will be localized within the neck and the neck may be also, also stiff. Next point, we have what we call a headache, and that is obvious. Headache is the most obvious sign of most conditions we, we come across in, the, in, in our today's world. There is no sickness called headache. Headache is always a sign or a symptom of a condition within your body. Another point which may show or which might make you come up with a diagnosis that one is having tonsillitis is what we call bad breath. Bad breath. The child will be having a bad smell because this is a viral or a bacterial infection and where there is a bacteria, there must be pus. So this produces the, 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 the bad smell. Not this, and this is very important, guys. Young children who can't describe how they feel present with, this is very important, young children who cannot, or who are in, not in a position to describe how they feel because maybe they can't talk or something, may present with the following. One, drooling drooling mouth which is due to painful and difficult swallowing they may also present with refusal to eat so when your child is refusing to eat just suspect this child may be having tonsillitis and if you get a torch and tell the child to open the mouth and try to 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 look at the knot neck you will see those oval shaped pads at the back of their neck being inflamed number three you we have a new show fastness number four we have what we call difficulties in breathing the other point which may the child may present with is um uh, we have talked about difficulties in breathing now and due due to the high body temperatures sometimes the child may have what we call scissors or conversions which are due to the high body temperature caused by this particular infection not this mostly uh, the child will be restless and it's not uh, very easy for a mother or a parent to notice when the child is having tonsillitis because it's not something that is so obvious or something you can just check and uh, conclude. Next, what, let's discuss about the causes of tonsillitis. And uh, mostly, tonsillitis is caused by virus, but bacteria infections, as we have discussed above, bacteria can also cause tonsillitis. So those are the major causes of tonsillitis. One, bacteria. Number two, virus. Note this. Tonsils are immune systems first line of defense against 
bacteria and virus. This means the work of the tonsils it is to act as defense or to fight the body against bacteria and viruses. So, tonsils are immune systems first line of defense against bacteria and virus that end up through the mouth. I hope you, 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 you get that. This function or this function of the tonsils make this function make tonsils vulnerable or they make tonsils be at risk. Vulnerable simply means at risk. So this function makes tonsils vulnerable to infection and inflammation. And also another point to note, tonsils immune system function or this function of fighting against bacteria and viruses declines all comes to an end after puberty and that's why it's rare to find many adults having tonsillitis compared to young children and uh, this marks the end of uh, this video and in the next video we are going to, to discuss about uh, the risk factors to tonsillitis prevention and most most importantly the treatment arrangements available for this kind of an infection guys continue subscribing liking sharing and i hope this content will help your brother your sister or your relative enjoy your sunday